is situated in Oldham, an old cotton mill town in the north of England. This video will show two aspects of their work over the last two years. Firstly, pages from their electronic magazine created by the software package Communitel. Following this, Movie Maker, an animated teletext cartoon language. The girls are showing the movie that they made, Alice in Oz. The girls were just 12 years old when they started this project.
South Hunsley School is a large comprehensive school uh, set on the north bank of the Humber, about 10 miles west of Hull. It serves the need of the River Iron population of about seven villages, and the school has currently about 1,400 pupils between the ages of 11 and 19, including about uh, 170 pupils in the sixth form. The school operates in three divisions, a lower school, a middle school, and an upper school and uh, has a very wide curriculum. Over the last 10 years, it's become increasingly obvious that information technology has been making great strides in the world at large. So, for example, in the home, uh, many children have started using computers, largely for games, things like that. Um, at work, in offices, for example, computers have been used for word processing, um, and there's been a lot of development of international communications using computers. Uh, in the same way, um, in shops, barcoding has been developing and uh, that has gone back into the warehouse and to firms manufacturing foodstuffs. Um, and finally, of course, in the factory, we've had the development of computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing. So that wherever you go now in the world, uh, young people are likely to meet up with computers in some form or other and some kind of computer-aided communication. For that reason, I felt it very important that here in school at South Hunsley, we have started to introduce information technology into the curriculum. Our problem has been one of logistics, of course, with 1,400 youngsters, with a need for all youngsters in the school to have some form of hands-on experience each year. Then we have had to develop a computer laboratory. 
a lot of watches cost many thousands of pounds and we have not had the resources to make this development. We've had to rely upon our parent staff association, upon our governors, upon the local authority, and above all, uh, upon our twinned company in our local catchment area, and that company is Bridge Aerospace. We twinned with them uh, through the Humberside Forum in 1981, and since that time, we've re met regularly two or three times a year to discuss curricular issues. Uh, two years ago, the company decided they would not only give us a lot of new computer equipment, but also it would um, lend us their apprentice systems engineers who would in turn develop a computer laboratory for us. So with their help and the help of the local authority, we now have a lab uh, which will seat a full class of pupils with two pupils at each computer and we've been able to implement over a two-year period classes in information technology for all pupils ranging from 11-year-olds right through to those in the sixth form. So this has been a very, very important development. Well, our main aim at uh, South Hunsley has been to deliver IT through the different subject, uh, different subject courses rather than to set up a separate uh, individual course for it. Uh, it causes problems in terms of timetabling, in terms of staffing, because we wanted the actual subject staff to, to teach the courses. So it has caused difficulty in, in that sense. But the advantages have been, have been very uh, great. Uh, the pupils have learnt IT in context, in the subject areas which it is relevant to. And also, I think uh, a hidden part has been the uh, reaction of the staff that we are now getting uh, more or less half of the staff at this school have been into the computer lab and have used the computer lab and are becoming familiar and now want to use it uh, more in their own teaching. Uh, in the sixth form course, which, which I have done myself uh, up to now, we've, we've had a, the main problem has been that uh, we have not had the experience, the children have not had the experience pre in previous years, and so the course has mainly uh, being composed of a general sort of computer awareness course rather than what I had hoped to do and that is to build onto uh, IT done lower in the school and to sort of give them project work based on possibly their A-level subjects but this, this, is, this has not been uh, possible since we've only had the course running for two years so it's, it's mainly a, a sort of computer awareness course where we're trying to give them experience of the major types of software that are available uh, for them to use. Uh, in computer studies, we, main, we mainly do get uh, boys opting for it. Uh, the ratio is, is only mainly 20% girls. Uh, next year, I, I, I've, I've had a look at next year's figures and I can see that we have got more girls next year. And there is a possibility that this has been influenced by the information technology which, we have, which they have experienced already in the first, second and third years. And I, I'm hopeful that this, uh, this will develop through and that uh, we, we will at least get the girls on an equal footing as regards computer studies because in many cases they prove uh, better uh, than the boys. Several years ago, each department was gathered together and asked if they would like to be involved in using the computer lab, which was then being developed here. The geography department, or liberal studies department, which is geography and history, said yes, they would like to be involved. Each department was given a year to look after. The geography department was given the first year um, information technology course, which we had to develop. Our list of criteria of things that we had to cover were mainly to get all the children to the same level, and secondly, introduce them to the keyboard, the keyboard skills. Now, there are two ways of doing this. There's either looking at the keyboard itself and just working on the keyboard, or using several programs and develop the skills uh, in that sort of way. 
This is the way we've tried to do it. So what we've in fact developed is a course which is run for six weeks where they come into the computer lab, each one of our first years come into the computer lab and work through a series of programmes. The first programme is in fact a simple um, map skills programme where they're working through uh, all different parts of the keyboard using letters, numbers, function keys without really realising what they're doing. All the information that they need is on the screen and they just work through the programme. The reason we use this programme is very, very simple. Every child of any ability can work through it without having to ask questions. So within a matter of minutes of coming into the computer lab, they're at ease. Uh, the second programme we go on to, which runs for a course of two weeks, is a programme, a database. Now we've used several databases. We've used a programme called Find. We've used uh, a local database that has been set up. And the programme which they're using at the present time is a purpose-built programme using vehicle and we think it's the simplest of the programmes although it's a programme which the girls tend to dislike after a little while. So come around the other side please. Right. If we look through here you see you've got Leyland, Polo, Gold, Blue, Tadcott, Transit, things like this. Okay? Now all those are details there. Leyland is what type of car? Is it a make or is it a model? Make. So make, we type in Leyland. If we're not sure, you see this symbol here. If we press that, it will tell us there. Okay? And then press space. So the make is Leyland. Okay? Model. See how it's changed colour? Model we don't know, colour we don't know, registration we don't know. The number that comes up here is how many there are. And there are 40. Search complete, press spacebar. Now, do you want to make another inquiry? The answer is yes, so we press number one. If we want to display that detail, we press number two, and that's the first one, look. It's a Leyland and it's a mini, okay? Now if we press the space bar, we go to the next one. If we press the Q, we quit. We've set up our own local history database, which we use with them um, a bit later on during the course. So we go from there. And then the last couple of weeks, depending on how the course has gone, we go on to using the computer, uh, word processing, using a program called Editex. We're in the process of developing our own uh, word processing package uh, along the lines of Editex, but using information that they've put in themselves, information, historical information, geographical information. So that's the way the course is developing. During the, the course of working through these programmes, we've uh, taken many different programmes and we've rejected a lot simply because they're too detailed, not really fall into the level that we want, or simply because we think there are better things on the market. So that's the way we've developed the information technology. We still think there's a long way to go. This is the first year that we've used IT in the second year. Each child has had a six-week course of one-hour lessons. And they start off, we assume that they have no knowledge of the computer, though in fact many of them have. We start off with a very tightly structured course in which they are given a few basic instructions and asked to copy some shapes from a worksheet. 
they then progress on to the situation where they have to write down the instructions for making a new set of shapes. And the work gets increasingly difficult as they go along. Um, after the initial 90 degree angle turns, we move on to shapes which require more difficult angles. And that starts to cause some problems. Many of the children who felt that they were quite competent at this stage realize that they in fact need to work out the steps before they can get any further. And so they begin to realize how important pre-planning is and how important it is to break each step down individually before they can progress any further. I find it tremendously advantageous because many of the brighter children in maths are very reluctant to break their work down in this way. They are convinced that the answer is all important. And so this necessary working step by step, which is absolutely essential for a computer, uh, makes them do that. And also, of course, their lack of success when they try to do it in their normal way reinforces this idea. I found quite a strong reversal of roles here in the classes that I took because many of the boys were convinced that they were experts, that's to say that they do use computers a lot and very successfully. And so when they came into here they had the option to work either individually or in pairs and quite a few of the boys chose to work individually. That changed as things began to get more difficult and they began to work in pairs because they were finding that they were not as capable as they thought they were. The girls on the other hand, most of whom had no knowledge at all and were very insecure about it, began to pick up after that second or third week because they are more methodical generally speaking and they began to find it successful and so there was quite a strong change in attitude on both sides. The third year information technology course is based in the science department and we have a five week module of about 90 minutes per week and we've decided to use the MFA microelectronics for all course and this course is based on a series of modules itself. I have an example here of the type of work that we do and the type of board that we use. This is an exa one example of about ten boards that the youngsters will be presented with. Um, it's the first board they use and it's the first experience of microelectronics of this particular type. It's got a series of inputs and outputs and in this particular case it's got three gates. It's important that we don't get the youngsters to investigate how the gates themselves actually work. This particular module, what's important is we know what the inputs are and we know what the outputs are. The actual mechanism of the switching is not at all important. Now the idea is to work from this stage, which is a very, very basic stage, up to controlling a Lego buggy or a music module. I have an example of the music module here. And it is possible for the youngsters to play a very simple tune through a fairly crude type of speaker by inputting information into a chip. So the end result is a control situation. It's a hardware control situation. And what we hope to do next year is to develop the course into software control to build on the work that the youngsters will have done in this five-week module. I've got one other example of a board which is an example of a board where the youngsters experience for the first time storing information in memory. And this is the memory module. The information that's stored can eventually be taken from module and used in the control situation. It's a very simple method of using slide switches to give a one or a zero and when the slide switches have been set pushing a press button to write into memory and a series of LEDs will light up to confirm the input into memory. And then, after a series of inputs have been made, in fact we can go up to 32 inputs, the information can then be taken from memory. Another feature of the course that we have found to be particularly useful is that the youngsters can work at their own speeds and in fact do work well, either individually or in small groups at their own pace. And the course comes with a series of laminated work cards, all extremely well explained, low reading level and with a series of questions at the end. 
Right, Nicola, how interesting did you find this topic compared with the other topics that you've done this year? Well, I thought it was a lot better than the other topics and more interesting because there's a lot more practical work to do and there's not so much writing. Uh-huh. So... So for you it was a very interesting topic? Yeah. Okay. And Neil, how did you find it? I enjoyed it. Uh-huh. We were finding out things more ourselves than rather than you telling us mm -hmm. what to do. Mm -hmm. So it, it helps us find out things by ourselves. Right. Did it influence your option choices in any way, Nicola? Well, yeah, in a way, because, I mean, I don't want any science subjects for the job. I don't need them for the job that I want to do uh -huh. when I leave school, but I preferred this to any other science subjects, so that's why I chose this next year. Which science subjects have you chosen? Physics. Right. Let me just pursue that a minute, because not many girls do choose physics, yet the girls did extremely well in the test on this topic across the whole of the third year. Have you any idea why? Well, it's obvious it's girls are more clever, aren't they? Do you think so? Yes. Right. Neil, let me go back um, <laughs> to, the, to the last question. Did it influence your option choices in any way? No, it didn't, because the things I wanted to do didn't work out because they clashed. Uh -huh. okay. Supposing that you hadn't had a clash, do you think then that there would have been a strong influence on you? There would have been, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the fourth year package this year has been based on a series of programmes from Pittman and the, the most controversial and the one that we've had best use of has been a crime package because we've been trying to establish how industry and businesses in general uh, use computers to aid them and in the case of the crime package we've tried to show uh, how the police have used uh, computers in helping them to track down criminals and the the area that we've looked at in particular is how the, the police have used or in some cases maybe misused the computer uh, for the Yorkshire Ripper package in that we tried to point out to the kids how the various details that they linked up with uh, on the computer didn't match and how they missed the, the Yorkshire Ripper on a number of occasions. The actual package themselves uh, the kids got use from because they tried to s solve a series of crimes uh, involving various bank employees and they did this by calling data from a bank and uh, establishing which of the suspects fitted into characteristics from a story. And I think they got uh, a lot of use out of that one. It was the most successful of the areas that we used. We also looked at um, purchasing records from a store uh, to see how stores could use the records for updating uh, materials such as the stock levels, how quickly they needed to reorder, what was the level that they chose to reorder discs at. And um, the kids in the group uh, acted as either a consumer or the wholesaler in s suggesting stock levels and seeing how quickly various lines of stock were disposed of. A third one was a, a similar one with books uh, and I didn't feel as though this one worked as well in that books were ordered at various prices and this was a, a till exercise in which they totted up the sales for a particular period. And at each level we tried to show how this would link to firms and their use of the computer. Uh, I think we were reasonably successful, although I think the package itself for the length of time that it was supposed to run uh, needed to be uh, revamped a little bit for the forthcoming year. The initial advantage is, is that it's given them hands-on experience on the machines because some of them have not had uh, use of the computer lower down the school. Some of them will have had the home computers, I think. But uh, some of them certainly were a little bit apprehensive at first before they went on. And the fact that they could get into a programme with guidance uh, reasonably easily, I think, gave a lot of them a bit more confidence than they had before. I think the course itself needs uh, moderating a little bit more. But I, th I think it has given uh, a wider element to the social education course. I've been involved in, in that course right from the beginning and some areas of the course are more readily accepted by the kids than, than others and I think this one they've been ready to get on the computer and to do things because they can see a result coming out at the end of it which may be useful to them when they've left school. So in that way I think it's been fairly useful to them.
Okay. Have you started your letter, Nicola? Yeah. Right, here's your letter from Alison. Alison Moppet, which I printed out yesterday for you. So you haven't read this yet. She's, um, it looks as if she's replied to quite a lot of your questions yeah. about music and she's mentioned yes, lots of me. bands who I've never heard of at all. So do you want to read uh, that yeah, and then uh, do your reply for you and Sarah? Mm -hmm. Have you heard of Hoosiers as a film? As who? Hoosiers. Oh, no. no. <laughs> See, there's a whole load of films here I've never heard of. No, I don't, I don't, these are all horror films, though, and I don't watch no, those. No, are they? Very yeah. sensible. Right. Well, we were quite surprised to get a letter, actually. Yeah, because some of the other groups didn't get them. We think that um, they probably wrote back to us because we wrote more about ourselves, whereas others just poured in questions. Yeah, um, we received it from, well, we think it's two girls, but one's called Erin, and we're not sure if that's a girl or a boy, so that's one difficulty. But apart from that, yeah, it's quite a short letter. Well, we set up a project with this uh, fourth-year class, of whom we've got some representatives here today, uh, to communicate with what we hope will be a class of a similar age in America. Um, in fact, we've found, now that we've got a couple of replies, that some of the children who've replied are the same age as our pupils, about uh, 14, 15, and some of them are much older, about 16, 17, which has made for some interesting responses. Um, we hoped, I suppose, that sending mail electronically as opposed to con a conventional mail package might have some interesting differences. For instance, it would give our children some experience on word processes that they might not otherwise have uh, during the course of a fourth and fifth year English course. Um, we hoped, I think, originally somehow that the whole thing would be much faster than conventional mail, and in fact we found it's considerably slower, at least at this initial stage, while we're still getting used to the technology. Um, we haven't advanced very far in the project. Our students have sent, um, really, descriptions of themselves and the place they live, Cambridge, to the students in America with um, a number, a, a fairly interesting uh, miscellaneous variety of questions about uh, films, clothes, fashion, uh, music, that kind of thing. And we've had three letters back so far. Uh, I haven't heard of some of these. The Grateful Dead, CSN, Boston, I haven't heard of those. Mm. Her favourite subject, history, she says, she thinks, but that's not very popular with her friends though. So. It's quite a big school, it's got, 1,200 people in it, and ours is only, you know, about 500. Um. Blimey, they've got pretty privileged hobbies over here, haven't they? Like what? I like to swim, ski, cook, and I do a lot of ballet. setting up a computer link with the Pen Pans Pal School in Newcastle, which is where I'm from, which introduces an interesting local angle of interest for me. Um, and we're linking this particular class up with very probably a third year class in a comprehensive school in the west of Newcastle. Um, and this links in, in fact, with some of the literature work which we're doing. We're starting off reading the Machine Gunners at the moment, which is based in Newcastle or in a vague area which seems to correspond to the Newcastle area. Um, and so I think it, it reinforces that work and adds some local colour to it as well. Uh, so at the moment we're busy setting up contact with the school. They don't know very much about it, or, or in fact they know nothing whatsoever about it so far. And uh, we're working on cryptic messages which give clues as to where we're from. Um, and are going to hit the school out of the blue one, one English period, one morning next week, we hope. So. And, uh, look, this is another, another anagram coming up. So. I'm spelling your name. Spell your own name, right? That's great, yeah. <laughs> well, how, how are we going to get your name? Oh, no, no, that, that's how you spell it. Yeah, I say it right. No, I have to spell my name. No, you don't. Oh, dear. Right, um... Um... Midway. 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 This is going to be yeah. good. They'll never get it. Campbell. We can put our real names at the end, so... Why do you think that'll be effective? Oh. What's effective about repeating that, do you think? Why, why do you think we should repeat where, do, where we live? Because it sounds mysterious. It sounds mysterious. It sounds, it sounds, it sounds almost like a magical chant, doesn't it? Where we live, where we live, where we live. And the more we say where we live, 
the more they think, where do they live? Yeah. Well, this is strange place. <laughs> yeah. So where we live is more fields. I think TTNS really diversifies the focus of English teaching in that it reduces the emphasis on the essay, which is, let's face it, a very unnatural form and isn't used greatly in, in real life, in the, the real world outside school. And so I think it very much diversifies the idea of what writing is about. And I see it also as reducing the idea of product, of a packaged product, which is what a letter is, after all, and puts the focus on processing and sending the information live and communicating in a, in a live sense rather than producing a perfect product. Um, and so I think it's a very direct live thing, pressing the button, knowing that you can in fact type on the screen and that it will come out and pop out on a screen in another city anywhere in the world is, I think, fascinating. And I think it also points us towards the next century and towards space age, uh, space age uh, communication. We saw the game. Um, uh, oh, God. B-Y-O-T. Body. Body. <laughs> Body. <laughs> Body. Um. Right, I think, um, first of all, there are a number of interesting questions that the Project Rights raises about the nature of children's writing. And um, one of the things I find really interesting is the, the sorts of collaborative processes that the children have been involved in. Because uh, on the first observation, my feeling was that the children were not entirely happy about the ways that their ideas were um, put into a pool of ideas and then on occasion were left, so to speak, on the cutting room floor. But on reflection and having seen it advance further, I think that there's a, an enormous opportunity for the children to actually sharpen their wits, so to speak. I teach a class of eight and nine-year-olds and they are engaged in doing communication with the Peterborough School, which is where I used to teach before I taught here. Uh, those children are mostly second language learners and they're mostly from Pakistan. And the difference, they're finding the difference between the two schools very, very fascinating. These children are then, they're writing to each other, both by a pigeon post as well as using the electronic mail and the, computer, and the word processor. They like very much writing to an audience. Normally they would only write to, for themselves or for their teacher. But the idea that there's another whole class reading their letters has given them a lot more motivation and impetus. And the, 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 it's more direct then. They want to find similarities and differences between the two, the two classes and the individuals within those classes. Dear children in class S2 at Milton Road School, this is the A-team calling. We are Atik, Abdul and Abid and we have got very short fingers from all the typing we have been doing. But here are last of our, our next batch of letters. Hello, my name is Majid. In the holidays, I was in my video shop. I had to paint the shelves. It was quite hard work. My hands were covered with paint. Then I had to go to London with my dad to get some films. When we came back, we put them on the Hello, my name is Nadine. At half term, I went with my dad to Birmingham to collect all the chickens for our grocery shop. When we got there, I had to make some boxes. Then, I, when, when I had done that, I saw a cat and I stroked it. Then my dad said it was time to go back to the shop, so we went. Dear Catherine, thank you for your lovely letters. I enjoyed reading them. What did you do in the holidays? We, did, we didn't do anything exciting. I had to do some work at home. I often went around my auntie's house to, 
house. I played with her children. They enjoyed playing with me. Right, children, can you tell me the things that you find very, very interesting about the children in Peterborough, Andrew? And the way they come from Pakistan. You find that interesting? Why? Because that means that they're different? Yeah. Yes? What about Amy? Um, the religious, the way they think of religious so strongly, and um, the way we don't think of it as strongly as them. So, that, again, you're picking up a, a difference then, really, because you find that they're very religious and we're not, and you find that quite interesting. Tom? Well, well, why they've got pets um, all the way in Pakistan. They've got yes. them so far away and cousins and uncles. Mm. Well, I think it's funny that um, they've got so big families, while the average family um, for the people in our class is about four or five. Really, even smaller, yes. I should think. I should think it's about 2.5, <laughs> although you can't really have half a child. But, yeah, so you find that aspect interesting. Yeah. Um, it seems they work very, very, very hard when they just come from Pakistan. In what way? Well, what kind of work? When they wrote, one of them had only just come back, and when he, I think it was a he, wrote a letter to us, it seemed like he had done quite a, he had done very well, and he had written quite a lot. Do you mean work like the one, we read a letter of somebody working in their shop, in their father's shop. Do you mean that kind of work, or do you mean school work? I mean school work. So in the way that they've learned English so well and are able to write, write down so much. In one way, the children are writing in a very, very public domain. They're writing on a computer screen that's visible and available to people as they walk in and out of the setting. They're writing collaboratively. They're receiving in a very public way. And that's very different to um, the experience of writing to a pen friend. So you can't put a floppy disk under your pillow. <laughs> so. I've been using word processing in class for I think well over a year and I found it very difficult in the initial stages to get started um, because of my own inability to actually use the hardware and I have partly overcome that and I feel I've had great success on the part of the children. Um, the main thing that I get out of it is being able to help the better writers with their creative writing. Generally speaking, it's very difficult to help those children who are writing fluently, writing fairly well, because you don't really have the time. You're helping the others to, to do spellings and punctuation. And if a child gives you a story which is nicely written, you say, jolly good, fine, um, end of conversation. And it's difficult to actually take a story apart when it's meant to be a creative thing. It's difficult to criticize. And I found that um, using the computer enables me to do exactly that and to teach the children to criticise each other's work constructively. Sweat started to pour down my burning face, petrified. I could yes. hear the pastor. Oh, yeah. Didn't you after petrified? Good. Well done. That's better. Okay. Yes. This is a lovely bit. I really like this. Read that sentence beginning with petrified. Petrified. I could hear the pounding of the jagged rocks being roughly thrown down by the toiling Roman slaves. I knew we had not. On the beginning of the second paragraph, the ending is brilliant. I like the ending very much. But it's um, this bit it's, it's a bit tedious almost. You wouldn't just say an enormous battering ram. Yeah. A battering ram, it's coming to get you. <laughs> Uh, last year, 85-86, I collaborated with a scholar from the Hebrew University. She was doing work on computers and education here at the Department of Education. And having worked together, and then we had various enterprises connected with computing going. And she said, when I go back to Israel, what we must do, as you're going to have a TTNS modem, is get you linked with a kibbutz in Israel. So we thought all systems were going and that we thought we could start producing electronic mail work about January this year, January 86. But I'm afraid that didn't materialize. But nevertheless, we've got a social studies project on Israel going, in any case, with Mrs. Thompson. We have a kibbutz link with kibbutz Givat Brenner in Israel. And because we haven't got the modem link, we thought, well, we've got this uh, connection going. Let's do what we can with it. It's a superb cultural exchange. So we've been sending ordinary word process mail by air mail and exchanging various questions and pieces of information. And the children have been setting up uh, pen pal links. So that's as far as it's actually gone. 
Um, now we have a connection developing though through the Hebrew University and the Cambridge University Department uh, of Education to use their system to actually send mail from here to uh, Israel. They learned a tremendous amount before we even sent anything in the way of organising themselves. We, we had an office routine, uh, we had typists, we had the boss. And um, the main thing, though, was they realised that they couldn't all write, um, this is Milton Road School, it's a bit grotty, this is Milton Road School and we have our lunch at 12 o'clock. They had to sort out who was saying what, and for children to sort out 30 children. It was a quite remarkable piece of engineering. As soon as we sort of got over that first major um, stage at the beginning and had something to send, then we started to look at the background of Israel in the more normal way that you would do social studies. We looked at the history, the geography, and we included artwork and this kind of thing, and stories about Jews, um, just Israel in general as a backup. And in fact, we jolly well needed that because it took an awful long time for us to get any response from the kibbutz. When we had our first reply, um, I was terribly excited and opened the envelope in front of all the children and was totally deflated when I realised that the replies were in fact in Hebrew and my urge was to just put it in the bin. I was so disappointed and of course this is exactly what I've been trying to teach the children not to do <laughs> and of course it was a major stumbling block because it took us three weeks to get it translated. However, we did. <laughs> well, the Hebrew, the Hebrew alphabet, it, every letter's got a story behind it. Or it's got something to do with an object. And it starts with Aleph, and it's got 22 letters in. Well, Aleph is the it's story behind an ox. I don't know the story, but... <laughs> and, the second letter is a house, and Gimel is a camel, and Dalet is a door, or a door post. We began with the Mary Rose project, where I arranged with Andrew Byrne at Parkside for them to act as uh, the Duchess of Suffolk and to ask the children questions. And it fitted in with the project that we were actually doing here, to do with the Mary Rose, which is a computer simulation project. And it allowed a different perspective into uh, our work because the children found they were being asked questions from outside, from beyond, through the mists of time, as uh, the Duchess put it, and made them think much more clearly, much more deeply about the, the, the kinds of questions, the kind of work, the kinds of research that they were getting from the project itself. And that was quite a simulation that uh, mm -hmm. added a different dimension to the work. More recently, we've moved to Newcastle-on-Tyne, and some problems, some initial technical problems, not so much the technology, but the difficulty of being able to get immediately through to the school, because we have to go through the high school. Right, that's a minor problem. But, again, we're, we're talking to a group of children in a totally different area of the country from the children around here, and that, I think, will, we hope, eventually bring out important differences, differences in views, differences in the lifestyles. Unemployment for the children here is not a factor in their families, but I'm guessing that it certainly would be in Newcastle. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important for children here to understand mm -hmm. those sorts of things, for mm -hmm. example. So what's been your general view of this uh, resource in, in terms of the classroom? I think in terms of the children within the classroom and within the school. Very important because this is a piece of technology which allows them to get beyond the classroom. It allows them to respond to a real audience. I think it's the National Writing Project have, uh, have indicated. A lot of work that goes on in the classroom is for the teacher, perhaps for themselves, sometimes displayed on the wall. Um, hopefully it will be. But the real audience is limited. And here we're talking to a real audience, we're able to talk to a real audience beyond the school. We're writing a relay story, um, where you write a part of a story and then you send it off and someone else and they write uh, the next bit. Uh, and who are you sending it to? A school in Newcastle. Do you know this school? No. You've never seen the people there at all? 
Is there a problem sending a story to someone you don't know? Well, I don't know. They probably don't know what your ideas are, and so they might have a few other ideas, and it, the story might change quite a bit. And would you think that that would make it more difficult for you to then to receive their reply? Yeah, I think it would, because um, when you start it, you've got quite a few ideas, and then the other people might get yeah. a few of those ideas, and then you'd have to think of quite a few more yeah. for the story. What, what, how do you stop someone writing masses and masses and masses and taking over the whole story? Well, we made some rules, and um, you have a maximum amount of words and a minimum. So you can't write more than 250 words. And, and what, what are the rules, if you've got? Um, there's on, you're not allowed all silly endings like happily ever after, and it was all a dream, and home and tea and stuff. Um, tell me, I mean, what's your story about? It's about some angels in heaven who have a big quarrel, and then one goes down on earth to sort out to see if he can sort out any other problems. I see. That's that's a very difficult story, I would have thought. I yeah. Mean, don't you think it is? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. I mean, suppose someone gets in and doesn't believe in angels. What's the problem? I'm not really sure. <laughs> but suppose you you've got something like that. How would you tackle? Um, I think I'd just try and carry on the story. Thanks. Because, I mean, the first people start it off and you've got to carry it on. And, 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 see, and then you could finish it on and go on, on accordingly, yes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, do you find you have to be more careful when you're writing it in this way if someone else is going to continue the story or does it matter? Yes, you can't write too many stories bits because then they, there might not be anything exciting for them to write and the story might get a bit boring. So you can't write too much. Yeah. That's why we thought, thought of the rules. Tell me first of all about, about, about something about this electronic mail. Who's so, first, first, <laughs> first thing we did was um, we were doing a project on the Mary Rose and uh, then someone wrote to us under the name of Mary the Duchess of Suffolk and um, Saying, saying that she was doing a tapestry of her life, but she didn't know. She needed us to fill in the missing gap. gap. Yeah. 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 Mary Rose. I see. We thought, oh, at first, we didn't realise how she could have a computer and communicate with us. <laughs> <laughs> That's something that's suspicious. She died, I mean. So, yeah. yeah. So, it would have modes. She asked us about... Um, and so what did she ask you, this lady? She, said she, she asked about us, um, her brother's ship. And yeah. what, she's in what happened? And what happened to it? Because um, when when it sank, she wanted to know Just what happened and what whether they'd found it or not. And, uh, and, and tell me, and did you reply to this letter? Yes, yes, yes we, we did. We did not to reply. Yes. Yeah, because we went to visit the Mary Rose, because we went off to Portsmouth. Portsmouth. <laughs> um, we went to visit, and uh, we actually saw the ship, and, and we told her that, us. and she wanted to know what it was like. And so we told her that as well. So Good. Now, how did you finally unearth the, the, the detective story behind all oh. this? <laughs> well, well <laughs> Chad, yeah. Chad was staying back after school because um, they were printing a letter, right? And then they were flicking through the book to find the names of the schools. And no, she no, we weren't. We, weren't. we, were, we were looking through around. a file and trying to discover something. I've forgotten exactly what it was. And I saw this Probably piece of paper. <laughs> ah, and, it had the number that, uh, and I saw it had the number, of, uh, it had the number which Mary children kept sending because you know what number it says with the electronic mail. And it was part and, of and, and I said, no, I just saw that number for the moment. And Mr. Phipps had flicked past it and I said, ah, um, um, I've just seen something. <laughs> and so I turned it back and, and I saw it. Uh, and where were these messages coming from then? Oh, 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 oh.